Good evening, friends. I am Dr. Sindhil Kumar, back again, but this time with a new channel. So, this is my second YouTube channel. I have created especially for just uploading physiology videos. So, many could ask me that already I have a channel, Dr. Sen Talks, where I uploaded almost around 20 to 24 physiology videos. But what I felt is that it also contains health awareness videos. So, now I am planning, especially as the new batch has come. I want to upload almost all the physiology videos. The main aim of this new channel is to make it sweet, short and crispy with mechanism so that students will be able to understand the mechanism of each and every topic which we are going to discuss. For example, if regulation of blood pressure which is actually expected as a very important topic, when we take it in theory class it may take 1 to 2 hours. But I will try to take all the concepts of the regulation of blood pressure. In this channel I will try to finish it by 8 to 10 minutes. So the main aim of this is to cover each and every topic in short duration. That's why I wanted to start this channel. You may ask, I can continue the same concept of physiology making in that channel also. But I felt the common public who are now started following the general awareness, health awareness videos, especially dietetic related awareness videos, they may get confused with physiology chapters also. Because here afterwards, I will be uploading at least 2 to 3 physiology videos every week. And health awareness videos also, I will be uploading 2 to 3. So it will be a confusion. So I thought, physiology, let us have a separate channel. Yeah, it is difficult for me, I accept because I have taken start from zero, but it's okay as it is going to be beneficial for students, it's not a big issue for me. So this will be my first video in my new channel exclusively for physiology. So the topic as usual in physiology also, the starting important topic is homeostasis. So today I will be discussing about homeostasis, just concentrate as the name suggests stasis. Stasis means stagnant, remaining the same. Homeo means home day. So what is meant to stay is ECF. So ECF is extracellular fluid, the fluid present outside the cells. So the definition of homeostasis is maintenance of extracellular fluid, which is also called as internal environment. Now when you will get doubt how extracellular fluid will be internal environment. So just to concentrate, this is my um, this is the human body, and we all know that body is made up of trillions of cells. We don't know exactly, but it is trillions of cells. So our entire body is made up of cells, and which is the environment for our body. So our body is nothing but cells. So whatever is surrounding the cells is the environment. So what's the surrounding the cells? For imagine this is our body, and there are trillions of cells. So whatever surrounding the cells is outside the cell, which is called this is body. So whatever is surrounding the cells is called extracellular fluid ECF which is the internal environment for the body. So the body is made up of cells. Whatever surrounding the cells is the environment which is inside our body. So what is surrounding the cells? ECF. So that is the environment which is present inside our body. So ECF extracellular fluid is called as internal environment and maintenance this internal environment is called as homeostasis. Stasis means remaining the same, maintaining, maintaining. You can even remember like home, that is for this ECF is our environment, extracellular fluid, the cells surrounding or the fluid surrounding the cells is extracellular fluid. So I hope now you understood the term homeostasis. Whenever we discuss about homeostasis, I want to name two scientists name. This homeostasis was also called as milieu interior. Yeah, so you know interior, internal. So inside of the body, the environment. So interior, milieu interior, it is a French word. So it was coined by French scientist. Very, very important MCQ. So it was coined by the milieu interior, the French word. So homeostasis is also called as milieu interior. Almost the same. The definition of what is maintenance of internal environment, which is milieu interior. But this term milieu interior was given by Claude Bernard. He is a French physiologist and he is also called as the father of modern physiology and another scientist name also I want to mention Walter B. Cannon he is an American physiologist and homeostasis so I again repeat the term milieu interior was given by Claude Bernard homeostasis that name itself was given by Walter B. Cannon he was American physiologist Claude Bernard was French physiologist and Claude Bernard was also called as father of modern physiology. He has done many 
researchers in physiology okay it has said now let us see examples of how the homeostasis is being followed remember in physiology almost all the systems whatever we are going to discuss in the upcoming series all are almost going to follow the homeostasis or in simply remember when something change is occurring in our body our body tries to do something to bring it back normal or maintain it the word is called maintain so to maintain the normal values something is happening that is called homeostasis for example if my bp my blood pressure increases as i was telling about regulation of blood pressure when my blood pressure increases something happens to bring the blood pressure back to normal that is called homeostasis even temperature maintenance of temperature that is also called as homeostasis i can give lot of examples maintenance of temperature maintenance of ph maintenance of bp hormonal regulation very very important so all of examples for homeostasis so when temperature increases for example now this is summer climate so what happens our body temperature increases so what does homeostasis our body does something to bring the temperature back to normal so i sweat so during hot climate we sweat sweating is a form of reducing the temperature so my body temperature tries to come back to normal this is also a type of homeostasis now we'll go a little bit in depth now i get, i divide the homeostasis into two types negative feedback and positive feedback as i said before almost most of the homeostatic mechanisms are negative feedback in the physiology some positive feedback will come which will be explaining now i'll go to negative feedback so an example i will take bp itself or we can take blood glucose so now to understand negative feedback i will have just drawn a circuit you can see that i will explain the example for example when a stimulus is given there is a variable which will take for example from normal the value will change when now the value is changed something is going to happen to bring that value to normal that is homeostasis this is given in the format you can understand for example imagine i am taking for it like so this is the disturbance or this is the stimulus eating carbohydrates for it like so what happens when i eat my variable here is blood glucose is increased my stimulus is eating it like for because of that what disturbance because of this eating what happens to the blood glucose is increased so my blood glucose is increased and this increase in blood glucose is sensed by the sensor so for glucose which is a sensor you should be tasses of pancreas and this will be sent to the feedback control that glucose is increased the beta cell send the signals and the set point so normal post prandial blood sugar should be 140 so normal post prandial blood sugar should be 140 so after eating what happens glucose is increased and because of this increase the beta cells will sense this increase and send to the feedback control and the set point is already fixed how much should be the blood glucose and what this will do if for example if this is above 140 if it is 160 the homeostasis mechanism starts what it will do the effect of the effect of means which is going to do the effect so here the insulin starts increasing that is the effect so there is insulin increase what is the function of insulin it will reduce the blood glucose so this insulin is going to minus so this insulin is going to decrease the blood glucose so this is an example of negative feedback so the final output is we start with increased blood glucose and what will be the final output decreased blood glucose so this is an example of negative feedback i again repeat any stimulus like increased eating which causes glucose change the blood glucose is increased which is sensed by the sensor here the sensor is beta cells which knows the whether how much glucose your blood is taking and this gives signals to feedback control the set point is already fixed your blood glucose should be how much your weight should be how much your bp should be how much that is the set point when the set point is varied your body because of the homeostasis starts secreting insulin which decreases the blood glucose here we start with increased blood glucose but we end with decreased blood glucose because of secretion of insulin insulin decreases the blood glucose so this is negative feedback there are some hormones i will show imagine thyroid hormone so thyroid hormone is increased because of some stimulus so what 
our homeostasis it is to maintain so what the thyroid hormone should be brought back to normal so what happens is the response will be decreased thyroid stimulating hormone as the name suggests what is the function of thyroid stimulating hormone it has to stimulate the thyroid but here it is decreased so what will happen so t3 t4 decreases so negative so this is also negative feedback one more example bp is increased so what your body does it has to bring it maintain maintenance so maintaining is negative feedback remember maintenance so here the barrel receptors will be stimulated and the function of barrel receptors is decreasing bp so i start with increased bp and end with decreased bp negative feedback mechanism in many example it can be increased bp which is coming back to normal bp or decreased bp also coming back to normal both are negative feedback so don't think that when the bp from 150 because of homeostasis it is coming to 120 that is also negative feedback because i am bringing it back to normal the value change back to normal is homeostasis now coming to positive feedback remember the difference negative feedback for maintenance positive feedback it is mainly for completion of a process so negative feedback maintaining positive feedback as a whole it is a part of homeostasis only but as the name says i will explain positive feedback it is a process or system or it allows for a process to continue because of this positive feedback one example you will understand for example take delivery of the baby Return to contract oxytocin is needed what oxytocin does in parturition parturition is nothing but delivery delivery so during parturition oxytocin causes uterine contraction and these uterine contractions will start stimulating more oxytocin and this oxytocin will start producing uterine contraction oxytocin uterine contraction oxytocin uterine contraction so just concentrate here oxytocin is the hormone which causes uterine contraction as the uterus contracts the baby is trying to come out that is the process of delivery so until the baby comes out the uterus keeps on contracting why the uterus keeps on contracting because oxytocin is keeps on increasing why the oxytocin is keep on increasing because of this positive feedback this is called a positive feedback so how long this positive feedback occurs until the baby is delivered which is the product so one more example also i can tell clotting so what happens for a blood to clot that also is an example of positive feedback i will tell imagine so there is a cut in the blood vessel here so what happens there has to be the block for the blood loss so here clot has to occur so what happens platelets so platelets will try to come at the point where there is a breakage of the blood vessel once platelet comes it attracts more platelets as more platelet comes this causes still more platelets so platelets still more platelets this causes still more platelets so until here more platelet plug forms so until platelet plug forms the platelets keeps on aggregating so this is also a type of positive feedback so one type of positive feedback is parturition where oxytocin causes contraction of uterus another type of positive feedback is clotting where platelets aggregate aggregation of platelets causes still more platelets to aggregate then LH surge note it down LH surge is an optional example of positive feedback and in action potential curve the sodium influx the sodium influx the sodium influx and action potential curve this is also an example of positive feedback the sodium keeps on coming in coming in until the spike potential is reached so once sodium comes what we think okay sodium has come the process is over no not like that the sodium will keep on coming until the system is reached that is spike potential here in LHRs the product or system is ovulation so until ovulation occurs the LH keeps on coming until delivery occurs the oxytocin keeps on producing the uterus contraction 
until the clot occurs, platelet keeps on attracting more and more platelets. So all these are examples of positive feedback. What we discussed is about homeostasis, maintenance of internal environment, and I also explained why ECF, extracellular field. Though it is outside the cells, it is present within the body. So it is internal environment, and about the two scientists, Claude Bernard and Walter B. Cannon. So homeostasis was coined by Cannon. So in the studio, we will discuss about gain error correction related to homeostasis.